Good morning, scholars. Today we're going to continue our way through Farr's Homeric Greek, a book for beginners, continuing with lesson 16. Here we'll cover the vocabulary for Iliad book one, lines 11 through 16. This will include Thugatea, Neus, Doma, Pas, Pasapan, Cosmetor, Aretea, and Apollon, our wonderful God. Okay, here are the main sections we'll be dealing with. Um, these are the nouns that Far emphasizes, but we'll go into all the nouns considered in this uh, list of vocabulary. And here are the sections, relevant sections in Smythe. 262, 262D, 275D3, 258, and 299. Okay, so first up, we have this very interesting set of um, nouns that are family names or family designations that have uh, stems in epsilon rho very varying with rho. So this is a stem that has three different forms of stem gradation. The strong, tau eta rho, the middle, tau epsilon rho, and the weak, tau rho. And as we'll see, or as we have seen actually with on air, rho between consonants can become ra, rho alpha. The vocative it has the recessive accent. Okay, so te, te, tra. And our words here are ho, pa, te, he, ma, me, te, and he, du, ga, te. Looking at the singular of these words, we see that, um, first off, let's just address this question of the formation of the uh, nominative singular itself. And this is addressed at Smythe 242. Um, masculine and feminine stems ending in nu, rho, and sigma reject sigma and lengthen the preceding vowel if short. So from epsilon to eta, from omicron to omega. So here, if we look at the comparison, compare the nominative forms with the vocative forms. In the vocative forms, we have patea, metea, dugatea, whereas in the nominative singular, that epsilon gets lengthened to eta, the long eta, so patea, metea, dugatea. And so again, 248, the vocative, of the masculines and feminines is usually the pure stem. So if we look closely at these, let's just start with pater. We see the three variations of the stem. The stem in eta row, the stem where the eta or epsilon has completely disappeared, so you just have tau row, tau row, and then you have epsilon row, epsilon row. So pater, Patros, patri, patera, pater, vocative. Now, um, these are the forms as they're represented usually in Attic, straightforward, you know, non-crazy Greek. But with Homer, of course, he has liberties. So there is a section uh, at the bottom of the page where you find Smythe 262, where he shows the Homeric variations. But we'll see one in 114, where we see lu somenos te dugatra, and we see that this accusative dugatra has used the weakest form of the stem where the epsilon and eta have disappeared and you just have tau rho. So Homer has the uh, ability to use that weakest form of the stem elsewhere than where you would see it in straightforward addict of Plato or Thucydides. So, uh, pater, meter, and dugater are all just declined in this way. As for the plural, this is very straightforward except for the dative. 
we saw that um, they noted that the you can get the alpha inserted before the sigma. So the data becomes patrase, metrase, dugatrase. But otherwise, you just have the endings that you would expect of the third declension, s, on, as, attached to the middle form of the stem with x, epsilon, pateres, pateron, etc. Now we come to the very complicated but important word in the Homeric where, word, world of naus, neos, naus, neos, feminine. Now this is the way it would be displayed in um, Addict and in the New Testament. Although I had a surprise, I expected to, I looked it up in the New Testament because I wanted to give New Testament people a little bit of the New Testament today and thought that this word might appear with Jesus walking on the water. But actually, he, the, the, the Gospels use another word, ployon, ployon for boat. And so, actually, now only occurs once in the entire New Testament. And I'll leave those who are curious to uh, search about to see if they can see where that word actually occurs. But here we see the forms that you would see in straightforward Homer or Thucydides. Naus, neos, ne e, noun, ne es, ne on, naus, e, naus. And you see that the variations of this from the alpha, upsilon to epsilon to eta, it's pretty uh, crazy. And there's no way to learn this but to uh, learn it. <laughs> well, it gets even crazier, put on your crazy mitt, because when we get to Homer and Herodotus and Doric, if you happen to be lucky enough to be reading Pindar, um, Homer and Herodotus, they have their own special forms that are even different from the Attic forms. So um, in Homer, we see neus, neos, neos, ne i, ne a, and ne a, and then the plural ne es, ne es, ne on, ne on, ne use, ne es, ne es, ne as, ne as. And so, again, we see that Homer has a lot of liberty uh, expanding or, con or, or shrinking vowels, i.e. having them in their long or short forms in order for him to fit things into his meter. So we will see very soon uh, the priest Crises coming, uh, do as epi ne as, uh, to the, to, to the sh swift ships, do as epi ne as. Okay, the next word we have is the word doma, domatos, which is neuter, and this is declined like uh, soma, somatos, the word for body, uh, found at Smythe 258. But so we have doma, domatos, domate, doma. Remember, a neuter noun always has its nominative and accusative forms the same. Domata, domaton, domase, domata. Now, this is a very, these uh, neuters like doma are very interesting because the stem ends in tau. And so to order, to understand how you get to the nominative, you have to have these certain, look at these certain cool rules. Okay. Now, I always, when I discovered this, this section 133, it's just something that I never really thought about. In Greek, they say, this is my talking about final consonants, no consonant except a new, a row, or a sigma, including xi and psi, can stand at the end of a Greek word. All other consonants are dropped. So new, row, sigma, and it's two compounds. All other consonants are dropped. 
Now, would you ever think of that? Like, what consonants can end English words? I mean, it's something I would never even think of thinking about. So I was very surprised when I saw that, you know, Greek has this only three consonants that can actually end uh, words, or actually five. So, what's going on here? How does this affect doma? Well, neuters show the pure stem from which final tau and the other consonants not standing at the end of a word are dropped. So we have harma, harmatos, pragma, pragmatos, gala, galactos, where to get to the nominative singular, and of course accusative singular, these kind of impossible end consonants have been dropped. The tau has been dropped, or in the case of milk, the kappa and the tau have been dropped. So this is a pretty cool phenomenon that under, that, that uh, highlights how it is useful to uh, know exactly what the stem is and what these, some of these rules are so you can just regularize what seems like chaos often with these Greek nouns, not to mention the principal parts of verbs. Okay, so there we go with the nominative singular and accusative singular of doma. Now, uh, very important common words that are declined like doma are haima, blood, kuma, wave, harma, chariot, dema, possession or property, like the suitors in the Odyssey are destroying Odysseus's property, pragma, a thing done, an act or deed, you see that all over in Addict, and I included kerugma, a public pr proclamation, what is preached, which you would see in the, in the New Testament. So these are your most um, common uh, words, nouns that are declined, like doma. Haima, kuma, harma, thema, pragma, and kerugma. Okay. So now we get the very interesting and ubiquitous pos. We'll look at the entry for pos, the lexical entry for pos in a second, but basically we'll just say it means all right now. And here again, the stem is in new tau. So reading Smites 299, stems in new tau occur in a few adjectives and in many participles. So the rules we're gonna discuss the principles of euphony that we're going to discuss um, with these stems in NT are very important and transferable to understanding how participles work when we begin talking about those. And as I mentioned, when we discussed the uh, passive, uh, Aor's passive participle a bit uh, a while ago, kolotes, basele e kolotes. But anyways, so we have pas, Pantos, pante, panta, pas. And then in the feminine, it gets a little weird because you have the sigma introduced. So let's jump to the nulo, neuter. We have pan, pantos, pante, pan, and pan. So let's just look at this for one second. So our stem is pant with new T. And if we remember, the neuter tends to be the pure stem, the neuter nominative accusative. And because that stem ends in tau, tau can't end the word, so that's just gonna be dropped. So that's why you get pan, pan in the neuter singular, uh, and even vocative, of course. Um, and um, otherwise, you're just seeing your endings, os for the genitive, if for the, for the dative, and alpha for the accusative singular added to pont the stem. As for the nominative singular um, masculine, pos, uh, that's just a little complex and um, I'm not going to worry about that. Just, you know, learn it. Pos, pasa, pon. Now, here at 299d, Smythe it explains that the feminine singular is made by adding um, semi-vocalic iota alpha to the stem. Thus, you get this phenomenon, phenomenon 
where the N and the T, well, they convert to sigma, and then that vowel in front of them is lengthened. So, um, thus, you get a lot of these things, lu usa from lu antia, usa from antia, istasa from istantia, tesa, tetesa from tetentia, and uh, this even, you even see this in the perfect participles. But all those forms in um, 299D are participial forms. But this is how you get from the NT to the S, the sigma, uh, from the now tauta to the sigma, new tauta to the sigma. And you'll notice that the feminine singular and plural have the endings of the first declension that you've already learned. A, 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 An, A. Okay? So the feminine is declined according to the first declension, whereas the masculine and neuter are good old third declension. Okay, and so the, the plural of pas would be exactly as you would expect. Pantes, panton, passe, pantas. Panta, panton, passe, panta. Again, the neuter plural is always the same in the nominative and the accusative. But then when you go to the feminine, you're going to have I on ice as, pasai, pason, pasais, pasas. And so here's the rule in question here, uh, or that, that's at work here, Smythe 100. Now, nu, tau, nu, delta, and nu, theta before sigma. And remember, you have sigma to, to add it onto the nominative singular to form, masculine to form the uh, that form. And you have the sigma iota added to the dative, plural. So this is where these are going to be relevant. So um, out of nu tau, nu delta, and nu theta before sigma, the form nu sigma sigma, then nu sigma, and finally the nu is dropped and the preceding vowel is lengthened. So this is um, a very important rule that it will make a lot of sense of what, of what seems crazy if you take the time to learn it. So I'll leave the examples uh, at the bottom at Smythe 100 for you to examine and ponder. Okay? But pas, uh, pasa, pan, very important word. So let's look at the lexical entry for that word. Pas, pasa, pan. So um, here we have our forms. And so it's equivalent to Latin, omnis, all, when used of many. So um, Crusades is going to be pleading with, he's going to liseto pantas acaius, all the Achaeans. Okay. When it's only referring to one, it's all or the whole, like I ate the whole pie would be uh, with a singular. So in the plural, look at Roman numeral one, pantes means all. So pantes tete oi pasai tete ainai, all the gods and all the goddesses. And um, from Thucydides, ton samnion pantes, all of the Samnians. And then Hama Pantes, Pantes Hama, all together in the Iliad and elsewhere. With a superlative, this is kind of cool, it's equivalent to the Latin Optimus Quisque. All the noblest are Pantes Aristoi, Pantes Aristoi, all the noblest men. And uh, so now moving to Roman numeral two, all the whole, this is our singular use, so pasa aletea, all the truth, calque pasa, all the bronze, it's from Heratus, ain he make, in kesi pasa, from Thucydides, ain he make, in kesi pasa, all the fighting was hand to hand. And, um, a little bit from Sophocles, hey, pasa, blabe, nothing but mischief, 
wonderful little expression. And so pas can also mean equal hekatos, every, um, in Homer and others. So we have pas kore, let, let everyone go, and also pas aner, or pas tis, every single one, and pas hostis, everyone who, and pan hoson, everything, you know, all, all, all included. Okay, so uh, it pays to study your lexicon, the entry fully, you know, students make the mistake, they open the lexicon, they grab the first meaning, and they think that they have what they need for the passage that they are looking at. And um, it does pay to, to read and study the whole entries, to be patient and enjoy them. Admittedly, it's a bit frustrating until your book vocabulary becomes stronger, but it will pay off in the end because these phrases are always translated for you. Okay, so a little more curveball for pas. Pas, when it is accompanied by the definite article in Attic and such, um, when the article is used, it is generally put after pas. So pas on ten dunamen, all his force. Or pas on ten ale dean, uh, all the entire truth. Pas is put between the article and substantive to denote totality. Um, so ho pas arithmos, the whole sum. Uh, topan pletos, the whole force, the whole number of men involved. Or as a substantive, even topan, kind of like the universe, the whole thing. Or tapanta, the whole. So um, that's pas used with the definite article. So here's our vocabulary for 16. And we'll be looking at some of these words in a second that we haven't covered already. Apollon, arete, duo, cosmetor, lysomai, malista, ercomai, toos, Dugatea, neus, pas, pasapan, and stemma, stemmatos, another word like doma, and kea, keros, which is an irregular word for hand or arm. Now, um, the most important, one of the very important words here is you see erkomai at the top of the right column, the word to come or to go. And you see the, um, the, it's a deponent verb, meaning that it has a uh, middle form of active meaning. Um, and the future, eliusomai, eliusomai. But then when you get to the second aorist, elton, it abandons those um, middle endings and just gives, goes back to the active endings. Elton with the alternative of eluton. So this is a very, very important um, verb. It's all over the place, and you might even take time to uh, write out repeatedly the stems. Erk, ele, eluth, elut. Because as we expand our knowledge of the verbs, you'll see that these are all important, and they allow you to keep it all together in your head. Okay, so our final words, our leftover words, are all words that Smythe um, gathers under section 259. These are stems with a liquid, that is lambda or rho, or with a nasal nu. So we see his word here, hotair, the word for wild beast. Well, that is going to be the way areter, the word for priest, is declined. So, areteros, areteri, aretera. And um, look at hegemon, hegemon, leader. That's the way Apollo is going to be declined. Apollon, Apollonos, Apollone, Apollona. O Apollon. So this set of stems in the nasal and a 
liquid is very important. We'll also see uh, Cosmator. Look at Rator. Cosmator, the leader or ruler, uh, marshaller of the troops. Uh, this will be de declined like Rator. Rator, Rator-os, rator Rator-ra, Rator-o-rator. So Cosmator, Cosmator-os, cosmator cosmator o cosmator so again, like I said at the beginning, if you know your third declension endings and you have a sense of the stem that you're working with, it's really not hard to identify these when you actually see them on the page. Good luck. So coming to arete, like I said, that is declined like hotea, beast, Aretea, areteras, aretere, etc. And Apollon is declined like um, hegemon. So Apollon, Apollonos, Apollone, Apollona, Apollon. Oh, Apollon. I'm not sure what the accent does there, if there's something special going on, but let's not worry about it. What's key is just to understand that this set of stems in the liquid and the nasal is a very important group of uh, nouns to look at and to get a sense of as you move forward. Like very soon we'll be seeing th people getting hit in the nose with a spear. So, hey, Reese, um, te, re, nos, te, re, ne, Tain, re, na, o, reese. Oh, I got hit in, oh, nose, you got hit with a spear. Okay. Okay. So thank you for listening. Um, be patient. Be persistent. Work hard. It truly, truly is worth it. There's hardly anything in the world better, literally speaking, than reading Homer in the original. So I'll see you soon and have a great day. Bye-bye.